to A Bodery. If you're new here, my name is Innes and I have a blog called A Bodery where I share inspiration for living a slow and handmade life. And today I want to share one of my most favourite craft DIY activities <laughs> that I like to do at home, and that is to make a natural dye out of avocado stones. You might think that avocados make a sort of greeny brown colour, but it actually turns out that the stones and skins of avocados have this beautiful peachy pink dye in them. And avocado dye is one of the easiest natural dyes to start out with. With lots of natural dyes you need to like pre-treat the fabric. With avocados you don't need to do any of that, you can just make your dye, stick your fabric in and you're away. Today I'm going to walk you through how I like to do it and a few little tips to help you get the peachiest of peachy pinks rather than a more sort of brownie muddy colour which can sometimes happen if you're not careful. You'll need about four stones, possibly more if you're going to dye more fabric but for sort of a couple of metres of fabric four stones is plenty. You can also use skins so in that case you would just want to keep the skins as well. It's best to store your stones in the freezer if you're keeping them for a long time. The best dye colour comes from fresh or frozen stones and skins so if you're not going to use your stones straight away then just pop them in the freezer and you'll get a nicer colour than if you just left them out at air temperature to dry out. You'll also need a big saucepan, um, the biggest that you can find is best because the more space that the fabric has to sort of circulate the more even your dye will be so definitely find a pot that will fit your fabric comfortably and with lots of space to move. So you want to start by washing your fabric in the washing machine to make sure it's nice and clean but don't dry it so afterwards either leave it to soak or just take it straight out of the washing machine into your dye bath because wet fabric will take the dye more evenly so you want to make sure that it's damp before you put it in the dye bath. To prepare your stones and skins, you want to scrub them thoroughly, and I mean thoroughly. You want those things shining. If there's any ounce of old avocado left, it will just make your dye go sort of brownie and muddy, so definitely make sure that your stones and skins are as clean as possible. Then you want to pop them in your pan and add several litres of water, definitely enough to submerge your fabric underneath, possibly a little bit more. It doesn't really matter how much water you add because the amount of dye particles in there will be the same regardless of the amount of water. So if you add more water, you'll just need to leave your fabric to soak a little bit longer. For one sort of single size bed sheet, which was what I was dyeing for this video, I used about six litres of water. So if you want an idea of where to start, then probably six litres is about right. I'm going to pop your saucepan on the hob and really really gently bring the water to a boil. You don't want any vigorous boiling because that is like one of the main things that will muddy your dye. So bring it to a boil and then simmer just really gently for about 20 to 30 minutes. While you're doing that just keep an eye on the colour. So what I like to do is to take a little white dish and just scoop a tiny bit of the dye water out into the dish to check the colour that you've got. And you really want to go on the colour more than the time here because it will depend a lot on you know, how slowly you brought that boil about. So what I would suggest every five minutes or so, just scooping out some dye and just checking the colour. And when you've got to like a sort of rich burgundy shade that's probably a few shades darker than what you want from the dye, then you want to turn your dye off the heat. And what I like to do is just to leave it all overnight. I don't know if this really helps, but in my head it just helps the whole thing to settle and often like I'm not in a hurry, so I just think if it just helps it to take more of the dye colour then that can't be a bad thing. Once your dye is ready, it's time to strain it and another really good tip is to make sure that you're straining really, really well. So I like to strain through an old muslin, which actually as a bonus has turned out I'm the most beautiful shade of like tie-dye pink just from straining and sometimes you might want to strain twice just because 
you want to get as much of the sort of leftover bits of stone out because they're going to cause patchiness in the dye when it comes to putting the fabric in. At this point, just a note on the heat of the dye. If your dye is still warm because you haven't left it overnight and you're dyeing something like wool or silk that struggles at a high temperature, then just make sure that your dye has cooled down enough so that it's not going to damage the fabric. Obviously, if you're using cotton or something, then it's not going to struggle even if you put it at a high temperature. But if you're using wool or silk, just make sure that your dye is not super hot. So pop your damp fabric or yarn, whatever you're using, into your dye and then either just leave it as is, um, probably overnight, or you can even just very, very gently heat it. So I like to just set my hob to like the lowest setting that it can and leave it for several hours at that low setting, especially if you're using something like cotton that can withstand a really high temperature. I think the heat just helps the fabric to take a little more of the dye. But yeah, like I say, if your fabric can't withstand the heat, then not a problem, just leave it at the cold temperature, that's totally fine. <laughs> Leave your fabric in the dye pot for as long as it takes to get to the shade you want. It's best to give it a stir every now and again, that just helps the dye to cover the fabric evenly and not settle sort of in any creases or folds. Of course, on that note, you can always purposefully <laughs> create a tie-dye or shibori effect with this dye, that totally works and looks really pretty as well, so you can give that a go. So once your fabric is at your desired shade, which will take anywhere from a few hours to even potentially overnight, you want to lift it gently out of your pot and give it a gentle rinse with probably just a little bit of detergent just to get all of that residue dye out. The next step is to hang up your fabric to dry, ideally out of direct sunlight, but I have also dried it in direct sunlight and it's worked absolutely fine. So that's something people say, but personally I haven't found it makes a huge difference. Once your fabric is dry, try not to wash it for just a couple of weeks afterwards, just to help the dye really settle into the fabric. After that, you can wash it as you would any other fabric. It will often fade just the tiniest bit in the first few washes, but then after that it settles down. And just like anything else, you can use this fabric to make whatever you want. So the old sheet that I dyed for this video, I turned into a little dress for my baby girl. I've also made cushion covers, including this one here, which is really lovely. Um, my favourite things to dye are linen and cotton, but you can also dye yarn, wool yarn and silk, obviously. On that note, this won't work on synthetic fibres, so if you've got polyester or anything that is even partly polyester, it won't dye well at all. Um, this only works for natural fibres, just like any dye, really, or any home dye, at least. <laughs> so yeah, I think that's everything. If you have any questions or you would like to know more about avocado dye, then I do have a blog post, and I will also link Rebecca Desmos, who for me is like the queen of natural dye and has loads of tips on her blog as well. I think that's all for now, so I will see you next time. Bye! Thank you.